Hi everyone, welcome back to another sewing tutorial. If you are new here, my name is Julia and I'm the person behind Egan of Patterns. I create sewing tutorials and patterns to help you on your sewing journey. In today's video, I will show you step by step how to make a dress using my Laura dress pattern. This dress features a v-neck and is cut on the bias. You can make this dress in a mini or midi length. Additionally, there are three finishing options to choose from. In this video, I will be showing the line dress. For the online dress with the bias binding, I will leave a link in the description. And for the option with fully lined bodies, you will have to watch both videos. First up, we have the online dress. This option is perfect if your fabric isn't transparent and you want a light dress for summer. With this option, the armholes and neckline are finished with bias binding. This option may be difficult for super beginners because attaching the bias binding requires precision as it likes to stretch out. But don't worry, I will walk you through each step so you can decide if it's the right option for you. Next, we have the fully lined dress. In this option, the bodice and skirt are lined, making it perfect for a more elegant gown. The lining adds a beautiful finish and makes the dress feel more luxurious. As you can see, the lining skirt is 3cm shorter than the main skirt, so keep that in mind. And now my favorite option, the lined bodice dress. This version combines the first option with the second one. You get the nicely finished armholes and neckline by the double lined bodice, but the skirt is unlined, which is perfect if your fabric isn't too transparent. For this dress, you need to follow the steps for the first and second options and you can find in the sewing instructions which exact steps to follow. Let me show you the difference in finishing between the fully lined dress and the option with double lining only on the bodies. For the fully lined dress, when attaching the bodies to the skirt, we sew at 8mm and then at 1cm to cover the previous stitch, giving it a really nice and elegant finish. But for the double lined bodies dress, at this step, we sew directly at 1 cm and then overlock the waistline for a clean finish, like in the dress with the bias binding. So basically, for the last finishing option, you follow the tutorial for the bodies from the line dress. Once you reach the step where you attach the bodies to the skirt, follow the steps for the online dress. I think I explained the most important part, so now let's move on the tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel, which would really help me to grow and create more sewing tutorials for you. So let's get started. First step is to cut out the pattern pieces from the main fabric and lining and remember to cut the notches. Once you cut out the pattern pieces, take your body's front and back pieces of the main fabric. Lay your fabric pieces flat with the wrong side facing up. Before placing the interfacing tape, ensure that the front and back panels of your garment align with the pattern correctly. It's important not to stretch the fabric while using the interfacing, instead adjust the tape to fit the panel accurately. Place a straight grained interfacing tape with the fusible side onto the wrong side of the main fabric. Align it with the neckline on the front and back pieces. Then ensure that the edges of the interfacing and the fabric match up. To fuse the interfacing, use a hot iron with no steam. Apply firm and even pressure, moving the iron gently back and forth until the interfacing firmly attaches to the fabric. Once the interfacing is securely fused, you can trim any excess interfacing that extends beyond the fabric edges. Once you fill the interfacing tape, place the body's back panel onto the front panel of the main fabric, aligning the shoulder edges with the right sides facing each other. Pin them in place securely. Now sew the arm edges with a 1cm seam allowance. Press the arm seams open. Now repeat the last step for the lining bodies. Place the bodies lining piece onto the main fabric piece of the bodies with the right sides facing each other. Align the neckline edges and pin them securely in place. Sew around the neckline with a 1cm seam allowance.
turn the lining to the right side and under stitch, ensuring to cut the seam allowance. Stitch approximately 1mm from the edge of the lining. Press the completed neckline towards the lining. Turn the lining inside out again, lay your bodies flat and align the lining and main fabric armholes with the right sides together, then pin them in place. Sew along the armhole seam using a 1cm seam allowance. Now clip around the armhole without cutting through the stitching line, clipping the seam allowance during sewing involves making small notches on the inside of the seam allowance to release tension along curves. Pull the entire garment right side out through the shoulder channel. Insert your hand from one side of the channel, grasp the fabric from the other side and pull it through. Now press the armhole from the lining, making sure the seam is centered on the inside of the garment. Now fold the body so that the side seams are aligned with the right sides together. Start by aligning the armhole seam, ensuring that the armhole seam of the main fabric perfectly matches with the armhole lining, placing the seam allowance of the armhole towards the lining. Then match the front bodies to the back bodies and the front lining to the back lining. Thank you. 
Sew the entire side seam with a 1cm seam allowance, stitching continuously from the lining to the main fabric bodies. Now press the seam towards the back. Now ensure the points where the gathering starts and ends on the bust are marked based on the pattern piece. I marked these points on the left side of the pieces so at this point I transfer them to the right side because in the next time we'll be closing this edge. In this step align the bottom edges of the main fabric and lining of the bodies making sure the side seams match up, then pin them together securely. Sew along the entire bottom edge, stitching close to the edge about 1-2mm to two millimeters away. This stitching secures the bottom and prepares it for gathering the bust in the next step. The next step is to gather the bust. Set the longest stitch length on your sewing machine. Starting at one marked point, stitch a row of stitching 5mm away from the edge to the other marked point. Do not backstitch at the beginning and the end and leave long thread tails. Stitch another row of stitching below the first one approximately 5 mm away from the first row. This creates two rows of stitching on the bust. The next step is to secure the thread tails on the sider closer to the neckline by tying together the two rows of stitching for the top and bottom threads. This will prevent the gathering from coming loose and ensure it stays in place on one side of the gathering.
On the other side of the cutters, without a knot, gently pull the fabric along the threads to create cutters. Adjust the cutters as needed until the desired fullness is achieved. Also, we'll adjust the length of the cutters later when attaching the bodies to the skirt, so make sure to keep this side of the thread untied for future adjustments. Press the cutters with an iron, this will help to set the cutters in place and make sewing easier in the next step. Fold the straps in half lengthways with right sides facing, aligning the long edges and press them. Sew along the long edge of each fabric strap, leaving the ends open. Sew approximately 8mm from the edge to ensure a secure and a flexible seam, creating a tube-like shape for the tie-ups. Trim away the excess seam allowance, then carefully turn each fabric tube right side out using a turning tool or a safety pin. Push the fabric through the tube until it is completely turned. Now press the straps flat, ensuring the seam is centered along one side. The side where the seam is visible will be considered the wrong side, while the opposite side where no seam is visible will be the right side. Now let's attach the straps to the skirt. Measure 1.5 cm from the top edge on the side edge of the front skirt panel and mark the placement for the strap. Place the fabric strap below the marked point with the right side facing up. Pin the ends of the fabric strap horizontally in place. Stitch the pin ends of each strap onto the skirt either by hand or using a sewing machine, ensuring to sew close to the edge.
Once you have sewn the straps, check that they match on both sides of the skirt. Now repeat the straps already sewn horizontally, ensuring they are in the proper direction for sewing. Keep the front skirt panel with the right sides facing up. Then place the back panel on top of the front panel with the right sides together. Align the side seams and pin all edges accordingly. Once the skirt panels are positioned correctly, hold each strap horizontally, remove the pin from the strap and then repin it at the top to secure the strap in place. Sew the side seams using a 1cm seam allowance, then overlock the edges and press the seams toward the back. Once you have sewn the main skirt, repeat the same steps for the lining skirt. The next step is to attach the bodies to the skirt. So lay your skirt right side out, take one side of the bodies and place it on top of the skirt with the right sides facing each other. Begin by pinning the gutter section of the bodies to the corresponding section on the skirt. Align the knot on the front skirt panel closer to the center edge with the guttering notch on the bodies closer to the neckline and pin it in place. Next, in the second notch of the guttering on the skirt panel, closer to the side seam, and adjust the guttering on the bust as needed using the notches on the front skirt panel as a guide. Once these points are pinned, move on to the pinning the side seams of the bodies to the side seams of the skirt, ensuring they are properly aligned. Finally, place the corners of the bodies at the center of the front and back of the skirt and pin the entire bodies to the skirt.
Now sew around the edges of the bodice and skirt with an 8mm seam allowance, ensuring you backstitch securely at the corners on both the front and back of the bodice. Keep it in mind that using a smaller seam allowance of 8mm instead of the regular 1cm allows the lining skirt to be attached later with a 1cm seam allowance, neatly covering the previous stitch. Now place the second bodice onto the skirt in the same way as before, make sure to focus on the center of the dress, ensuring that the corners of the bodice create a triangular shape, then sew around the edges of the bodice and skirt with an 8mm seam allowance.
Now ensure that you have sewn the corners of the bodice properly. There should be a small space between the corners, approximately 4 mm, because in the previous step we attached the bodice to the skirt with an 8 mm seam allowance. This space is necessary because in the next step, when attaching the lining and sewing with a 1 cm seam allowance, the corners should meet precisely. Keep your lining on the left side, then take the main fabric and insert it into the lining with the right sides facing each other. Begin pinning from the center of the skirt, then match the side seams and pin them all around. Ensure that the bodice is sandwiched between the layers of the skirt from the main fabric and the lining. Sew along the entire edge through all three layers. Stitch around the edges with a 1 cm seam allowance, ensuring it's further from the edge than the first stitch. This will effectively close the layers. Before reaching one corner, sew slowly to the center of the skirt where the bodice balance meet up. At this point, put the needle inside, lift the presser foot, rotate the fabric and change the direction to continue sewing along the edge of the other bodies.
Now check if you have sewn properly, especially the corners of the bodies on the center of the back and front dress. They should align without overlapping. Now press the entire body towards the dress to ensure a smooth finish. In this step, remove the gathering stitches from the bust, then press it to achieve the final look. Before the final fitting and hemming, especially for dresses and skirts, cut on the bias, let the garment hang for 24 hours. Allowing it to hang ensures the fabric settles and stretches naturally. You can finish the main skirt with either a rolled hem or a single folded hem. To make a rolled hem, start by folding the fabric to the wrong side by 5 mm. You can press it earlier if necessary. Then stitch 1 mm away from the folded edge. Trim off the remaining seam allowance, cutting as close to the stitching as possible, about 2 mm away. Now fold the edge over one more time towards the wrong side of the fabric to cover the row edge. Stitch on top of your first row of stitching. There will be two stitching lines on the wrong side of the garment and one line of stitching on the right side of the garment. Press the hem of the main skirt. Now finish the bottom edge of the lining with an overlock stitch. Press the 
overlock edge and fold the edge inward by about 7mm depending on the width of the overlock and then press again. Now top stitch approximately 5mm from the edge, adjusting based on the width of your overlock, then press again the bottom hem. Hold the row edges of the open ends of the strap inward by approximately 5mm and press. Now hand stitch the open ends for a clean hidden seam. Press the tube for the final finish. Here's the finished result of the line dress. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more sewing tutorials. Thanks for watching and happy sewing!